Hey, it's Ryan from All Forest Foods. So I'm going to go over real quick with you, just this is going to be a short video, I know a lot of my videos end up being a little bit longer, but a real short video that describes how testosterone is signaled in the body to be produced. So I'm just going to talk about the anatomy and a little bit about the physiology of it. So when the body signals to produce testosterone, it's starting in the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is going to release something called gonadotropic releasing hormone. And you're going to see this abbreviated a lot of the time, capital G, lowercase n, capital R, capital H. It's gonadotropic releasing hormone. And this is actually the same in men and women. We're both going to release this hormone and it can signal later on to produce testosterone. It can signal later on to produce estrogen. The gonadotropic releasing hormone, it doesn't go very far in the brain. It goes from the hypothalamus and then it goes to the anterior pituitary gland and that's, they're right next door to each other. When it gets there, it's going to signal the release of two other kind of signaling hormones. One of those is called follicle stimulating hormone, which you'll see abbreviated a lot of the time as FSH. And that's going to go on to help nurture uh, sperm in the testes. The other one that it's going to release is called luteinizing hormone, and you'll see that one abbreviated as LH most of the time. Luteinizing hormone is going to travel and it's going to activate these special cells in your testes called interstitial cells. The interstitial cells are actually what's going to be producing the testosterone. So the luteinizing hormone, it travels from the anterior pituitary gland, it gets into our general blood supply, and then it ends up in the testes at the interstitial cells, and then you're going to signal to produce more testosterone. So the reason why people have different levels of testosterone is because the brain is releasing different levels of the gonadotropic releasing hormone in the hypothalamus. So what happens is that as your levels of testosterone get to this kind of set point, your body switches off the release of that gonadotropic releasing hormone. This is called a negative feedback mechanism and it's how 99.9% .9 of hormones in the body are controlled. Really the only one that I can think of off the top of my head that doesn't follow this is oxytocin, which is the love hormone or also the hormone that people, that women produce during childbirth. And this one actually is a, is a, a kind of a positive mechanism where when the body senses the presence of oxytocin, it releases more oxytocin. But most hormones, including testosterone, all of the sex hormones, work on a negative feedback mechanism. So when there's an adequate level of the hormone in the body, it shuts down production. So we all have different levels. It's kind of like a thermostat in your house. You know, you can set that thermostat to 65, and as long as it's 65 or above, the heat's not going to kick in. But when it drops below 65, the heat kicks in. So we all have this type of a hormone thermostat in us for the sex hormones, for all the different hormones. So. People have different levels of testosterone or other hormones because their set point is set at different levels. Now, with androgenic herbs, with herbs that are giving the body to produce more of, this, of the male sex hormones, it's going to work on different levels. So, an herb like Tonkata Ali appears to work on the gonadotropic releasing hormone, so it's actually signaling for more gonadotropic releasing hormone. But the vast majority of androgenic herbs. As far as I could tell, looking at the scientific literature, they're working on luteinizing hormone and also follicle stimulating hormone. So that means that as you take androgenic herbs, it's not just improving the uh, amount of testosterone that you have in the system because it's increasing that luteinizing hormone, which is then going to signal to the interstitial cells of the testes to produce more testosterone, but it's also going to be increasing that follicle stimulating hormone which goes to the nurse cells in the testes, which nurture, which nurture and develop the sperm. So for people that have low levels of sperm, that's a sign of a low levels of sperm or really improperly formed sperm or any kind of a issues with the quality of sperm. That's a signal that there's a, a hormonal imbalance, a dysregulation happening. So that's why the androgenic herbs, you'll see that for pretty much across the board for the androgenic herbs, you'll see that they're not just increasing testosterone, but they're very effective at increasing male reproductive health. So it's very interesting. So uh, you can't really have one without the other. You can't have good levels of testosterone with inadequate uh, 
re reproductive health, and you can't have reproductive health with uh, low levels of testosterone. Of course, we can find an, an example that disproves this, but as a general rule, this is this is uh, how the body is regulating and, and working with itself. So just to recap, the brain in the hypothalamus is going to release gonadotropic releasing hormone based upon that negative feedback mechanism or if you're going to promote release with androgenic herbs. That gonadotropic releasing hormone travels just a very, very, very short distance to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland has two lobes, but the sex hormone lobe is the anterior lobe. From there, that gonadotropic releasing hormone signals to increase luteinizing hormone, which travels to the interstitial cells and testes to increase testosterone production, and it releases follicle stimulating hormone, which travels to the nurse cells of the testes, which uh, develop and nurture and, pro and properly bring about the, the maturation of the sperm. That about sums it up. It's a very, uh, it's a very short but sweet system in the body, and uh, doesn't mean there aren't some problems with it, but that's how it's working. That's the anatomy and the physiology of it.